Hey everyone, Dr. Yi here. First of all, Happy New Year. I hope everyone will have a great 2022. As promised, here are two lessons on making inferences and predictions about fictional writing. This is part one of the series, and then I'm going to make another video, part two, uh, on the same topic. This is a really a later lesson, so, um, but since some of you requested, so I moved it kind of up. So this lesson is called Use Evidence from the Text to Make Predictions and Inferences and Draw Conclusions about a Piece of Writing. So this is the, uh, the official title in the TIS study manual. And these are learning objectives. You need to be able to synthesize information from the text to form a prediction, make an inference, and draw a conclusion. And you need to be able to locate and cite evidence from the text to support your prediction, your inference, and your conclusion. Okay, so just a real quick, we mentioned these definitions before, but just as a refresher, inferences are conclusions you reach based on the evidence and the logical reasoning, right? So usually um, the conclusions, these conclusions are not directly stated in the writing, but you need to be able to make inference, right? Based on the evidence from the writing and a little bit of logical reasoning. Second, predictions. These are assumptions that something has happened or will happen, right? So in order to make predictions, you also need to rely on the information provided in the writing. Now, when you make inferences and predictions, make sure that you only base those on what's available in the passage, right? Don't go beyond the information provided in the writing. So only rely on what's available in the writing. Okay, these are the common formats of questions that you may see on T's. For instance, T's may ask you, which of the following is a prediction based on the passage or a specific part of the passage, right? They may say, uh, what's uh, a prediction based on the last two sentences of the passage? And second, which of the following is an inference that could be made about, it can be very specific. It could be a person, a location, a situation, or an event. Next, which of the following synthesizes information about? So again, it could be about anything, right? And last, which of the definitions can be inferred for the meaning of a, a particular word in the passage? Now, usually that's the word that you don't commonly see, um, but you need to be able to guess based on the information available, based on the context. All right, so here is a practice question. Uh, I'm going to give you about 59 seconds to read the paragraph and answer the first question. All right, so I'm going to start the timer now. All right, that's about a minute. If you do not finish, that's okay. Just pause the video and then finish it. As you practice more, your reading speed will go up. Um, okay, question one. Which of the following is an inference that could be made about the author's dead? Right, so you need to um, find the part where the writing describes the author's dead. So let's see. Um, the description is over here, right? Okay. Now, A, he was a man who was afraid of snakes. Now, the passage is about their encounter with a snake, right? But there's nowhere that mentions the dad is afraid of snakes. 
B, he had been bitten by venomous snakes before. Again, this is not mentioned anywhere in the writing. Now, the author did talk about somebody he knew was bitten by a black mamba, but it wasn't his dad. So you can't really infer anything about B either. C, he worked a lot on wildlife. Now, that's the correct answer because it's mentioned here. He was the outdoor cliche of the game ranger. So, so this implies that um, the dad was a game ranger. That was his profession. D, he was a good hunter. There's no mentioning of that, right? Not all game arrangers are good hunters. Okay, so correct answer is C. All right, next question. Question two, which of the following is an inference that could be made about the author? A, when he was a boy, the author had little knowledge of the venomous snakes. Now from this sentence, I, I grabbed my father's arm. Well, I'm gonna skip that. Dad, there's a mamba, don't move. Now you can see that the author recognized this species, this venomous snake species right away. Right, so he had a lot of experience with, with venomous snakes, and that's how he could uh, you know, identify the species right away. And he even told his dad not to move because he knew that it was dangerous, right? You don't want to provoke the animal, startle the animal, and the animal could strike, right? So A is not correct based on our inference. B, when he was a boy, the author used to work as a game ranger. That's not correct because we know his father was a game ranger, but the writing doesn't say that the boy was also working as a game ranger. And chances are he did not because he was still a kid, right? He was only 11 years old. C, when he was a boy, the author had a deep trust in his father for his own safety. And that's correct. There's a sentence in the first paragraph I always knew that so long as I was with him, I would be fine. So as a game ranger, you know, they would probably encounter a lot of dangerous uh, wildlife, right? But the boy knew that as long as he was with his father, um, his father would protect him and he would be safe. So C is the correct answer. Let's look at D. When he was a boy, the author was not adventurous and was reluctant to go outside. That's not true, right? Because right now they're outside doing some kind of adventure. And also just based on the information here, the boy knew a lot about wildlife. So obviously he was um, you know, doing a lot of outdoor stuff to have that experience. So D is not correct either. Correct answer is C. All right, next question.
in the next few paragraphs, the author will likely describe. So you can see what we have now is a story on an encounter with a super venomous snake, right? So the author gives a little bit of information on the background of black mamba and how dangerous it is. So what do you think he's going to describe next? Is it A, his other experience growing up interacting with the wildlife? Not likely, right? Because, oops, because his focus is on this particular story. So it's unlikely that he will, you know, just switch to a different experience. B, other dangerous venomous snake species in the area. Again, that's not very likely um, because that's kind of beyond what this story is about. C, are the venomous snake species he had encountered when he's young? It's unlikely that the author would just switch to a, a totally different story, right? Um, his encounter with other venomous snake. Uh, that's not likely to happen. D, how he and his father escaped the potentially deadly venomous snake. That's the correct answer. Uh, basically, the, the author is likely to continue the story, right? And then tell the readers what happens next. All right, last question. Which of the following definitions can be inferred for the meaning of gangly? Is it tall and thin? Yes, that's the correct answer. Because you can see that um, the author described here that he was all legs and arms, right? He was just like a newborn wild beast. The thing about a newborn wild beast, um, it's the body is kind of relatively small compared to the length of the, the limbs, right? So the author was uh, super tall and thin, so not muscular and strong, because it's also mentioned here, there is a contrast right between him and his dad. So his dad, in contrast, had a profound ruggedness, as if, oh, that's as if, as if his body were battling to contain his energy. Right? So his dad uh, was the outdoor cliche of the game ranger. So his dad was pretty strong, muscular. But but the author was not. So not short and stocky, not active and adventurous. So correct answer is A. All right, guys. Um, this is part one of making inferences and predictions uh, for fictional writing. I will have uh, part two finished very soon and upload on YouTube. Again, if you can, if you like the video, subscribe, like the video, uh, leave me a comment and share the video and you just complete another lesson. And again, you are more prepared for the teeth. Good job, everyone. I will see you next time.